Okay, now we are going to talk about the dengue virus. And whenever you hear this term dengue virus, it means it's a fever and mosquito borne, right? So let's talk about the dengue virus. What is dengue virus? The structure, the genetic material and the life cycle of a dengue virus. So let's begin. What is the basic information about the dengue virus? It's a mosquito-borne viral disease that occurs in tropical and subtropical areas, which is common in India, Africa, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Pakistan and all these different countries. And you can see the overall look of this dengue virus that, that includes the outermost picture containing structures known as E-dimer and it also have multiple proteins. So there's a M protein layer, there's a capsid protein layer and inside of which there is a genome. Those who became infected with this virus a second time has a higher risk compared to the one uh, who is infecting for the first time. How does it look like? As I mentioned earlier that there are multiple protein layers present in the capsid structure which is protecting its genetic material. Uh, it's roughly spherical structure and composed of viral genome and capsid protein surrounded by an envelope and a shell of protein. So apart from the capsid, there is, you know, as I said, that there is a protein surrounding by an envelope, which is made of a protein as well as uh, there is a shell of protein outside. Okay. So you can see clearly that from this point of view, there is a M matrix protein in the orange color. Then there is a lipid bilayer, which is known as the envelope. The envelope is made up with the lipid bilayer and inside of which we have a M matrix protein coat and outside there are integrated G protein, which are the attachment protein or attachment structures on the surface. Okay. And there is also fusion protein or F protein. You can see there are two types of surface protein visible. One is the G attachment proteins. Another one is the F fusion proteins. What is the size of dengue virus? Dengue virus, as I said, is an enveloped virus and it has a 40 to 60 nanometer size. Okay, which is an isometric nucleocapsid and the nucleocapsid itself is of 25 to 30 nanometer and including all the protein layers and the envelope, it becomes 40 to 60 nanometer in diameter. What is the genetic material type here? The genetic material here is 10.7 kilobases linear positive sense RNA structure. When you are talking about virology, you must know what is plus sense RNA strand and what is minus sense RNA strand. I have separate videos on that. You can watch that. But in this case, it's a RNA virus and it's a plus stranded RNA virus and the size of the RNA is 10.7 KB. The dengue virus exists as four serotypes, dengue 1, 2, 3 and 4. And they are genetically related to other flavi viruses such as yellow fever virus tick-borne encephalitis virus. So they are belonging to the family of this yellow fever and encephalitis virus family. What kind of disease this dengue virus cause? Okay. The symptoms include high fever, headache, rash, muscle and joint pain and in severe cases serious bleeding and also shock to the body which can be life-threatening. But in general if it's infecting a person for the first time the person may witness different pain areas like in pain in abdomen, back, back of the eyes, bones, joints and muscles. There will be whole body chills, fatigue, fever or loss of appetite and there will be gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea or vomiting. There will be skin rashes and red spots and very common easy bruising or headache of the body. What is the incubation period? The symptoms usually last for 2 to 7 days after an incubation period of 4 to 10 days. So when this dengue virus infects a person, the person may develop the symptoms within 4 to 10 days after infection and the symptoms will last from 2 to 7 days. So within a week a person will get better, feel better. Most of the viral infections are short lived up to 1 or max to max 2 weeks. More of the transmission. Uh, dengue cannot be spread directly from person to person. This is a good thing about dengue that it does not spread directly from a person to person by sneezing, coughing or things like that. It needs mosquito as a vector. Okay. So if an infected person is present and a, and a mosquito infects, I mean mosquito take blood from that person and now that same mosquito uh, go and sit on the skin of another person and inject the same thing blood during this contamination only dengue virus can move from one person to the other that's why we call it as a vector based uh, disease where the mosquito acts as a vector what are the classification there is a group four as per the baltimore classification 
there are Baltimore viral classification. If you want to know, you can watch that Baltimore classification video of mine. This is single stranded plus stranded RNA virus order unassigned family Flaviviridae gen genus Flavivirus species Dengue virus. Okay, so there are different ways people pronounce this Dengue, Dengue, Dengue. There are other things, but I think it's mostly Dengue that you should pronounce it. Now. What is a dengue fever classification? The dengue virus infection can be divided into two different types, asymptomatic infection and symptomatic infection. If it's infecting a person for the first time, it can be asymptomatic. But if a dengue virus is infecting a person for the second time, in that case, it must be symptomatic. If it's a symptomatic infection, then can be divided into two parts. One is the undifferentiated fever and there is a dengue fever. There are two different kinds of fever. The dengue fever has without hemorrhage property or with hemorrhage. With hemorrhage means excessive bleeding. Without hemorrhage means without bleeding dengue fever. There is a pattern of this dengue fever and that differentiates between the other kind of fever. If it's an undifferentiated fever, then we call it asymptomatic infection or undifferentiated fever. We don't call it as a dengue infection. But if it's uh, following the pattern of dengue fever, we then call it as a dengue fever and can be classified into without hemorrhage kind and with hemorrhage kind. Hemorrhage is more dangerous and severe and life threatening. And there can be dengue hemorrhagic fever, DHF. The dengue hemorrhagic fever means plasma leaking syndrome. And as a result of which bo body's plasma drains out, as a result of which body, uh, it's, it will be very difficult for our body to maintain the osmotic balance, the pH and all these regulations that ultimately can lead your body into shock. Okay, a uh, so either it can be no shock even after dengue hemorrhagic fever, but if there is plasma leak syndrome, then it leads to dengue shock syndrome or DSS. Okay, we call it dengue hemorrhagic fever or DHF. In this case, blood start coming out, excessive bleeding, excessive plasma start losing from the body. As a result of which there is problem with maintaining fluids in the body, maintaining os osmolarity in the body. And that leads to several different kinds of organ damages and that may lead to death. Now let's look at the life cycle of a dengue virus. Okay, so we start with this. This is the partially mature dengue particles. Okay, you can see that this partially mature particles. Uh, this is this is what we are seeing that the virus particles how they move and partially mature particles are normally coming out from the host cell. And what happens is that uh, they become a fully uh, structural organized with all the protein coating on the surface. Once it's done, you can see that. Uh, it has you know PR protein on the surface. The PR proteins are dissociated and they become partially unmature uh, dengue virus particle. Because for the dengue virus to enter inside our body, there are different ways it can uh, take entry. Uh, if it is without the PR protein, it will take entry directly via the host receptor. If it contains uh, this PR protein, then dengue specific antibody which are present on the surface of our immune system cells, they will engulf it and they'll try to destroy it. So that's why dengue virus try to attack a host cell without the PR proteins because PR protein is easily recognizable by our immune system cells as a foreign material and they can be engulfed and degraded. So they usually without the attack without the PR protein and now host receptor binding and then after that receptor mediated endocytosis is done and inside the receptor they will be removed. Okay. So this nucleocapsid is then translated by the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So once the because it's a plus stranded mRNA and the advantage of plus stranded mRNA is that uh, the mRNA is ready to be translated. Minus stranded mRNA cannot be directly translated. We need to convert it into plus stranded mRNA then can be con uh, can be translated. So plus stranded mRNA is readily translated by the ribosome which is attached with the endoplasmic reticulum. And once they make the proteins, you know, see the, they 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 start making more and more mRNA and this is uh, this this all mRNA further they, they produce from the existing plus stranded mRNA is minus stranded mRNA and this minus stranded mRNA is used as a template to make another set of plus stranded mRNA. So it's simply RNA dependent RNA polymerase that are being used to make plus stranded mRNAs for the uh, packaging and meanwhile as I said that they start making the proteins and the proteins are produced. 
uh, by this ribosome which are associated with the ER and what they does is that in this case they make the proteins and they embed the protein in the ER membrane and this is what fascinates me about the dengue virus is that this viral particles the protein structures the surrounding proteins are made and they are associated and in, in embedded into this ER membrane so that this nucleocapsid which is released now we know that these proteins are prepared and they already prepared the plus standard mRNA. The plus standard mRNA will again be translated into their structural proteins. So structural uh, protein for the capsid they are producing, the plus standard mRNA is already present. So plus standard mRNA will be packaged via this capsid proteins and the nucleocapsid structure is formed. And then this nucleocapsid structure will be in contact with the region of the ER where all this other accessory surface receptors are present and once they are folded uh, they are engulfed inside of the endoplasmic reticulum like that you can clearly see this picture that this nucleocapsid is in touch with this okay surface proteins and they engulf it inside because the internal ph of the er here is 7.2 near neutral and from that they start to form vesicle bulge it out into trans golgi network that the pH of 6.7 which is a little low from trans Golgi network to medial Golgi into the cis Golgi network where the pH is little acidic of pH 6.0 and here they use enzyme furin protease to cut cut it out okay cut the few fragments if necessary and then uh, the viral part particles are ready and again uh, bulged out inside of a vesicle virus maturated and this virus particle will be released out of the cell so this is the process of the life cycle of a dengue virus that works via uh, that that comes via the endoplasm like the receptor mediated endocytosis but it takes its journey through the rough endoplasmic reticulum through trans golgi network medial golgi cis golgi network and then forming vesicle and going out of the cell so this is the overall idea of how exactly dengue virus infects in many cases for for instance we talked about adenovirus adeno associated virus they involve nucleus in their replication and a life cycle of a virus but in case of dengue virus the life cycle they don't include the nucleus they include the endomembrane system of host and that is rough endoplasmic reticulum trans golgi network cis golgi network vesicle and fusion these are the steps of the dengue virus life cycle so if you like this video hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more and more videos like that in future thank you bye